Hello everyone. When you first start SnapCAD, everything will be stacked up and needs configuration. Everyone has a different preference as to what they want to include or how or where they want to put them. Um, so let's get started. Uh, this is the main SnapCAD window. Up at the top we have the toolbars. Now we generally want to arrange the toolbars by grabbing the toolbars by their their head adjustment and dragging them into the place we want. So the toolbars can be arranged here at the top or they can exist down into the drawing panes and they can be adjusted however you wish. They can be stacked at the right of the window to give you give you extra areas to work with or the, the right or the left side. They can hover like I mentioned or generally they can be left at the top where they are best arranged. Now I have preferred to arrange the windows in such a manner that it, they become easily usable and all in one area and this is the way I arrange my window my toolbars within the window now this toolbar that I'm moving right now is the expert toolbar generally it's only used to make custom pieces for the parts library so we generally don't need to use it. Now we can make it disappear by using the drop down menu for the toolbars and click expert bar and that will make it that will hide that toolbar. Also we can go to the view and toolbars and do the same thing down over here. Now to arrange the different view panes the main window, uh, we would want to provide yourself with the most drawing area. So we will grab the dividers and adjust them so that you give yourself the most area to draw in within the drawing and viewing panes. Now the top here is the project model parts list. It's a textual representation of the model that you're building. And I like to see three or four of the textual lines and that's about it when I'm building. Now once I start getting a lot of parts and added to the, pro to the project I will want to expand this a little bit to be able to move parts up and down by capturing them and dragging them with the mouse but for now I will generally only want to see three or four lines. Now this area also upon each startup of SnapCAD they need their dividers adjusted so that you can read the contents of each area. So I like to give them a little bit of space so that we can read everything that comes up into the textual lines and give yourself room to see all of the inputs. Over here is the parts tree. It's every part and element available in the parts library. Now each one of these categories can be expanded or contracted. These are textual representations of the parts that are listed down in the parts preview where you see little thumbnails of each part. Now I usually keep this closed and just deal with the different categories just by clicking on them. Each category has to load up the um, little thumbnails so that they can become visible. And I like to adjust it so that the space around the text eliminates the scroll bars so that no scroll bars will be in the in the view 
uh, and restricting some space here. So when we click on a category, it may take a few seconds for the thumbnails to be loaded, especially the control system category, where the where the thumbnails are you know larger and more detailed, um, and it may take a few seconds or more to load up these little thumbnails. And this area down here on the bottom left is the parts preview where the thumbnails are listed. And you can have several in this area and, and quite a many is, is, is the more you drag over the the divider here you can add more parts into this area. Generally I like to see larger parts in this area and what you would do is you would hover your mouse cursor in this area and right click and with each right click you'll get more or less uh, parts in the preview pane. Now to divide the main windows you can divide them individually with the dividers or you can come into the central point and grab them and move the dividers around so that you can see each view pane. Now the view panes are listed where it says front, top, and left, and the bottom right view pane will, will be the 3D pane upon default. Now you can change each one of these by right clicking in the area and coming down to view angle and change the different view panes to whatever angle you might want to look at apart. So with that configuration complete, let's look at adding some parts that will be, let's see we've got an extra little scroll bar that we can eliminate, give ourselves a little bit more space. Now when you start a new file it will add some extra comment lines at the top. Now these generally need to stay there um, and not altered in the way just by clicking on them or double clicking on them and changing their information. But by going in and saving the file we'll give it a file name and the author name here is what you want to change your own name to. So we'll come to settings, general, change. We'll get this window here we'll want to change the author name to your own name and I will change it to my own name now what I usually put in when I am catting and I add my email address check it over and before we leave this I always want to make sure that some of these are unchecked or checked. Generally by default they're all checked and when you loaded Snapcat for the first time you probably registered the file types. Now we generally don't need to, to show the warnings each time so you can uncheck that box if you feel like it. Um, we'll get to some of these other settings later in another series of video. So we set our name. Let's click OK. Now, click the new file, and your name shows up in the, as a comment. Now, upon each time we add a part, will stack under each other in this textual parts list. So what we'll do now is we'll demonstrate adding a couple of parts. So first I'm going to add a beam. Then I'm going to find a pen. I'm going to grab a pen and place it in the beam. Now change its color to blue. You notice that here that should be dark gray. OK. 
pen will be blue. We'll need to rotate this pen so that it fits in one of these holes. And we'll come up to the list here and we'll use a rotation arrow. Now you notice that if we want to rotate this to be in line with this hole, we'll rotate it on the x-axis. doesn't matter, each pen is about the same on either side, so we can just click either rotation there. Now, since we were set up on a grid, the beam was placed within the course grid and every time we grab a new part over they will all line up on the course grid until we change the grid settings. Now we've added this part within the course grid so we're just going to drag it over. And see how they lined up with each other within the grid. Now we we'll come over here to zoom to fit and it will fit all of the parts within the window <laughs> to be the to fit within the window. You can do the fitting within zoom level as well if you right click within a pane. Now the active pane will always have a red border. That is where all of the settings and controls and moving of a part will occur within the active border. And just uh, within the active pane changing another to another pane you just click click into the clear open area if you have a part that's selected it will have a, bo a bounding box with its part origin at the center with you know, will be viewable in each pane now you can't click on a new part because that binding box is con you're now controlling that one part if you wanted to control a different part you either come up to the top and click on the uh, the part you want to control or click into a blank area within the view pane and then click on the part itself. So you can always select a new part. Now dragging a part or using the buttons will move the part. So you can click on it and drag it around and it will drag to a new part or it will drag anywhere you want to position the part within the different course grid uh, setting. Now we've added this one part, we can grab another part and it will maintain the same orientation as the part we previously added. So we can go ahead and grab as many as we want, fill up the holes, and basically that is how we start building parts, um, connecting the parts. Now in the next video we'll introduce steps rotation steps, and more advanced building methods. Thank you very much.